All right. Good evening. Two nights in a row. <laughs> Don't know if I was really planning this, but um, yeah, just uh, coming across some good articles. And um, first and foremost, I wanted to address that the broadcast from uh, last night had a minor technical difficulty where it might have been hard to hear me because I'm a knucklehead and um, had made a very minor tweak to my settings and I think it resulted in some low volume. So uh, I believe I have that corrected now and we should be fine. So as I continue to uh, check some settings right now. All right, so a couple stories that really caught my interest and I definitely wanted to address them. But uh, before we do, once again, picture behind me of uh, Maseratis, Ferraris, everything from the Lime Rock Park uh, historical, um, historic festival that occurred. Uh, it was like the end of August, so the last couple of days of August, uh, first one or two days of September, and it was unbelievable. Um, if you've never been, you must go. If you have any bit of motorsport enthusiasm in your blood, you must go to Lime Rock Park to this historic festival. Uh, once again, every year, it's, it's right around the end of August or beginning of September. Um, it's, uh, it's a few days where the, the cars are on track for a couple days. There's a concourse, um, and each car is more gorgeous than the next stuff that you will maybe see once in your life and, and never see again the collection of cars is stunning so um for a little bit more information on that uh i did a, an interview with the uh event organizer you can find that in the archives on the flying 1at youtube channel take a gander uh it's a nice interview and um yeah a lot to learn there it, it's just a, a, an amazing event so for this evening, uh, let me see what we have. Story number one, um, which I came across, which I think was noteworthy, is the fact that uh, I believe everyone is, is familiar with the um, Australian fires. And obviously people donating here and there, but I think that uh, Lewis Hamilton definitely deserves a shout out for donating $500,000 of his own money to help correct this issue. I mean, 6.3 million hectares. I mean, I, it's hard to put that into like perspective. It, it's almost like, let me see. I think in the article they, they, okay, here it is. How big is the total area affected by, by this fire, by New South Wales fire? And if you look at this map around London, Okay, that's only 5 million hectares. So this is even smaller, about 20% smaller than what the actual size of these fires are. Uh, and I mean, the, the, the worst part about this is, is not just the loss of land. Obviously, land is always recovered from fires. The earth is always recovered from fires. Um, but we're not going to recover from the... Uh, the loss of, of wildlife um, over 1 billion with a B billion animals have perished in the fires. Um, I, I don't even know what to say to that being an animal lover myself. Uh, it's absolutely terrible. I don't know how, how to put it in, in, into words. What, what I feel about that and I just wish I was in a position to contribute more, but, um, terrible circumstances that, um, uh, Australia is under and it's it's great to see people like Lewis Hamilton leading the charge here with a uh, a donation of once again five hundred thousand uh, dollars kudos to you Lewis thank you uh, and uh, for setting the good example and uh, I just pray that um, everyone can recover from this I hope they do it's a shame uh, we're going to try to move on to a little bit more of an uplifting story. I got to start off with happier stories. Last night, I started off with the uh, passing of Junior Johnson and now the Australian bushfires. I got to start off on a more positive foot. I, I apologize, guys. Um, 
kind of an interesting story. Nothing too cru crucial, but it was just kind of, uh, it shows what goes on behind the scenes for some of these racers trying to maintain the racing schedules throughout the season. Um, so you have, I mean, I don't mean to laugh. It, it, it's, it's kind of scary. It's kind of a little bit funny and a little bit unfortunate, all wrapped into one. But um, Rory Butcher was uh, taking a flight and he was on his way to, uh, I believe, uh, Dubai. Yeah, to Dubai 24 hours. And due to the Iranian strike on the American forces uh, that occurred a few days ago, um, the flight was diverted to uh, Hungary, I believe. I'm sorry, I apologize, to uh, Turkey, to Istanbul to be exact. And then uh, things got worse. And, and if we look at the article here, and this is courtesy of autosport.com, uh, matters were comp compounded when his connecting flight to Dubai. Uh, the following morning was delayed by a technical fault on the runway, causing Butcher and his teammate Paul to miss the entirety of free practice running. Um, because he set no time lapse before qualifying, both Butcher and Paul were forced to miss the race and return home unfortunate a little crazy things you don't even think about but things that are happening behind the scenes such, such as this um he go he mentions in the article that it was a little scary because you're in the air you hear about you know potentially in a full-fledged war breaking out right in front of your flight path and uh they had to uh, divert obviously for uh, their own safety um i believe they were on british airways and uh Thank God everyone's well. Obviously, thank God every nobody was hurt from the from the uh, from the strikes, and um, moving forward. Unfortunate that he missed the race. Story three. Once again, we're on uh, Periscope here. If you want to say hi, just say hi. Where you're from? I'll definitely say hi back. Uh, I know people jump in and out. Third story of the evening, and then we're going to uh, give it a wrap. And once again, these stories are the top stories of the last 48 hours on the Flying 118 Motorsports Twitter stream. So um, we go to the uh, some motocross, and this is courtesy of what website is this? This is racerxonline.com. So thank you to Racerx Online. But this is in preparation for um, a race in uh, St. Louis. And the coolest part about this is the analysis. And I wish I was more knowledgeable with motocross, which I am not. So I'm not going to pretend like I know what I'm talking about. But uh, I can definitely appreciate good motocross racing. But this track is very cool to look at. Very cool layout. And if you notice... One thing that uh, I, I think is just so super creative in the creation of this track design, specifically, uh, well, primarily based on the fact they need to squeeze it into a stadium, as you can see, is that the starting line consumes probably the widest part of the infield there, right down the middle. But they only start from there once. So just to get the race going, they come down that main center section, and then you can kind of follow the course from there very very difficult sections um and the analysis that's uh put forth here by i believe the author of the article um yes jason thomas so this is his analysis and predictions for the uh 2020 st louis supercross but if I were to read this, it would blow your mind how technical he gets on this. And it, it definitely, this a track like this de that definitely deserves um, the technical analysis that he threw at it. But very cool. The article goes on to um, show a little bit more of the uh, layout. We'll just take a look at it real quick. Very cool. even a tunnel here which is awesome
That's a big jump. Another big jump. <laughs> so sick. Totally cool. I'm into it. So, uh, feel free to follow up with that coverage. Um, I believe that's coming up this weekend. But very nice in-depth analysis of this race. Uh, Racer X Online is always always provides quality uh, articles and coverage of the sport. So definitely check them out. Um, and that that pretty much covers, uh, I believe, everything that uh, I wanted to cover. Once again, these are all articles based on what's popular on the Flying 180 Motorsports uh, Twitter stream. Uh, if you want to check out more pictures of the uh, Lime Rock Park Historic Festival, you can visit the Flying 180 uh, Motorsports Instagram. Um, once again, this video, along with all other videos, are on the Flying 180 YouTube channel. And uh, I will be back soon, maybe tomorrow, maybe in a couple of days. But I can see a pattern developing here. You know, some, some good articles coming out. And uh, I think these shorter news coverage types of uh, broadcasts will, will, will be fun. So uh, feel free to click on the, um, the links in the, on my Fly Money T Twitter. You're starting to see more of the pics from the, this uh, historic festival roll out. I have an entire catalog of pictures from this event on the Instagram page. So you can always go there and visit and you'll see the, uh, all the pictures. All right. I thank you very much. I thank you for joining and I will see you very, very soon. Have a good night.